now that we've picked out a robot that we think will work, we need to do more advanced on its payload and its reach analysis. So we can be pretty darn sure before we buy something that is, could be several hundred thousand dollars, that is going to for sure work for the task we need it to. So for an advanced payload analysis, we will look at the joint torque and load diagrams in the manual. And for the reach analysis, we will actually put the robot into CAD and move it around to make sure that it can touch all the points we need it to. So we'll start with the payload analysis. To do an advanced payload analysis, we need to know more specifics than just the weight of the tool and the part. So what we did in our basic analysis was we found the tool mass and we found the part mass and we checked the load. But really it's not just the force on the end of the robot that matters, it's also the torque. So we need to know the dimensions of the tool and the part. So we can calculate center of gravity, moment of inertia, compare the allowable inertia values, calculate torque, calc um, check the allowable torque value, and then check the combined load graph. Now, some of the, the torque values can be found in the robot's data sheet. So if we go back to the data sheet, then we can see here wrist torque for our robot is 1135. So we would need to know how long is the tool and that way we could calculate how far away, what, what would the actual torque on the wrist be? So we go back here. For our example, we remember that we had a part, which was 50 kilograms. We had the end of arm tool, which was 45 kilograms. And then for something like this, we'd need to know how long is the tool. So let's say the claw is maybe 10 or 30 centimeters, about one foot from the wrist of the robot. Now here is our robot from the data sheet. So let's draw in, let's say we've got the end of arm tool on here. And so let's say we've got a claw that sticks out Here's the grabber, and then we'll put a part that it's going to hold right here. So we need to know kind of about where the center of gravity is, distance from the robot's wrist. So here is the wrist. Center of gravity, we'll say, is about here. Say that distance is 0.3 meters. So the torque equals the force times the distance. So that is going to be the mass of the part plus mass of the tool times gravity plus whatever is the lift acceleration. So Generally, the robot will have some kind of limit on it, but to statically hold something like this, then it is easy, but to lift it up is going to be harder. So we'll say here that this distance D equals 0 0.3 meters and lift acceleration equals one meter per second squared. So G plus A and then the distance. So we put numbers into here, we have 50 plus 45, which is 95, times 9.81 plus 1, 10.81 times 0 0.3, which equals 308 Newton meters of torque. So let's check that with the value that was given in the data sheet. So for our robot, it's this one, 1135 Newton meters is allowable wrist torque. So it looks like we're good because 308 is less than 1135. So we're good with wrist torque. And now we also need to check 
risk load. So for the load, we'll add up, okay, the weight of the part, so weight of the end of arm tool. And we'll check the risk load diagram. So we found 50 kilograms plus 45 kilograms equals 95 kilograms. And we recall that D equals 0 0.3 meters. So now we'll look in the manual on the robot wrist load diagram and find our operating point. So if we go to the manual, we can scroll down and find wrist load diagrams. So 1.5. So we can scroll down to where our robot is. Now this is the straight out configuration. So Z is the distance straight out from the wrist. L is distance to the side. So if we look here, we said 0.3 was our distance. Um, actually, and we can see that the robot can handle that 95 kilograms that we needed. Um, if for some reason it was holding something way out here, it would not be able to handle that. But holding pretty close, 95 is well under what it can take. Now, if the robot was in wrist down, you can see a wrist is pointed down, then it is actually stronger. The closest it can, it can even handle 170 kilograms if the wrist is always pointing down. So our 95 kilograms, we could even hold it way out here. So we have some room to make the end of arm tool longer or pick up a heavier part if we need to. So let's find our operating point. So now let's mark our operating point. We make this one a little bit bigger. This is a wrist out configuration pointed like this. If for some reason the wrist was pointed down, then it would be stronger. But here we need, we have 95 kilograms and 0.3 meters. So if we go out 0.3 meters and we aren't any to the side, we're just straight out in front of the robot. So here is our operating point. Here, it looks like the robot could probably hold like 152. And we're at 95, 95 less than 152. So that's good. This means that if the robot is lifting the part with some acceleration, we can handle that. If the end of arm tool ends up being a little bit longer, we can handle that. If the part gets heavier, we can handle that. So this robot is sufficient for the job as far as the payload goes. So then finally, we have to calculate the reach analysis. And this is something we can do by putting the robot in CAD and actually dragging it around to the different points that it needs to reach. More on that in a later video.